This is Will with Stogie Geeks, and we're doing a Stogie Geeks Shorts live from the Southern Cigar Festival. I'm here with my good friend Mark Thompson of Esteban Carrera Cigars. Mark, how you doing today? Great, guys. How's it going? Oh, it's going great. So, um, Southern Cigar Festival, what are your thoughts so far? Pretty awesome. It's a, It's been a blowout all day long, so it's been a lot of fun. Now, are you in the sun or out of the sun? I'm out of the sun, thankfully. I'm in the nice, shady, cool part of the building, so it's been good. I, I got asked um, by a manufacturer if I could watch the booth for five minutes, and it was on the other side from where you are, and I was dehydrated in five minutes. I believe it. I've been watching them cook over there. But but in general, most of the stuff's been covered. It's the way the sunlight's going. I think the covered venue's been fantastic. I agree. So, Mark, um, Esteban Carreras, tell us a little about the company for folks who may not be familiar. I think a lot of folks, it's, it's a company that's gained a lot of momentum in the past few years. Well, we're uh, a Nicaraguan-based company. Our corporate office is in California. Uh, we own our own factory in Esteli. Uh, Chupacabra, our police series. Uh, we've got about 12 lines, and we're getting ready to sneak out a brand new cigar just before the show called Black Cross. Black Cross, uh, what can you tell us about this cigar? It's not a medium-bodied cigar. It's got a Habano Cafe wrapper over a Nicaraguan binder filler, Jalapa Valley uh, Lajero, little spicy, no pepper, and sweetness. And that just intensifies as you smoke the cigar. Wonderful. What what size is, it, is that going to come in? We're going to do four sizes. One of them is called Bonita. It's a five and a half by 42. Then your standard Robusto, Toro, and a 660. Now, Esteban Carreras, like I said, they make 12 lines, but I haven't seen a lot of that uh, that Bonita size in the lines. That's kind of a, a geeky size that you guys are bringing in there. Yeah, it's a brand new size. We've done a couple of little things. We took Chupacabra and did uh, what we call Chupita, which is a little little 4x42. And uh, we also just recently did it in our 12-year Connecticut. And it's called Coronita. It's a 4x42 12-year Connecticut. Wow, yeah, that's really good. Now, um, you have uh, some other great lines, uh, Diaz Años. That's something that recently just made a return. Yep, Diaz Años is back on the street, as good as ever, if not even a little better. It's our 10-year San Andreas wrap cigar. It's just a little cocoa bomb, nice, solid smoke all the way through. Yeah, and you mentioned the police series, and you have the uh, the 5150, you have the 211, and the 187. Look at, you know, I think that's a line, it's been out for a few years now. Right. Kind of gets overlooked in the marketplace. There are some fantastic cigars in those lines. They are. 187's an Aganor Salif Maduro. The 5150's a Sumatra wrap cigar. And then the 211 has a hybrid wrapper on its De Florado. It's a hybrid Connecticut and Habano wrapper. It's just a really nice, very uh, smooth, kind of a medium, mild to medium smoke. It pairs up great with coffee. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, uh, I remember when, when the 5150 and the uh, 187 came out, and then the year after the 211 came out. Right. Um, yeah, just like I said, just fantastic cigars. Um, in terms, you also have my favorite, and you and I have talked about it, the, the Habano Maduro. The one I'm smoking right now. Yeah, that is, <laughs> and you smoking the Robusto. Yep, yep, smoking the Robusto. It's the 13-year Habano Maduro. Just a nice, solid smoke all the way through. I know why you like it. Yeah, it, uh, I just, uh, it was like my number three cigar six years ago, and it's still a go-to cigar at, at a great value price, I might add. Well, we've always tried to keep all our prices right in the middle. We don't sell online. We're... Uh, very conscious about the brick and mortar guys. We really try and support them. The the gentleman Craig Cunningham, who owns our company, is a brick and mortar guy himself. So very dedicated. We like to say we have retail DNA. Yeah, yeah. And you know now you've actually the company in the, over the past few years they've gone to the next level, introducing the Esteban Carreras factory in Esteli now. Right. Yeah. That's a. I guess he's had it for three, maybe four years now. That's. Um, just puts the quality control in the house instead of buying tobacco, having someone else roll it for you, run the risk of things not going quite the way you would like. So we just do it all in home now. And, and that's, they're producing some other great cigars. We just had Clint Aaron earlier on, two, six, two, some of the 262 cigars. That right, out right, air. right. And then, of course, Bloodlines coming Bloodlines out Bloodlines out there, too, yeah. We make so, those two cigars. Yep, no, so that's great. Now, the question I get asked the most, who is Esteban Carreras? Esteban Carreras was a freedom fighter in Cuba, and he helped get people out of Havana when Castro was coming in. 
So basically, he was. They didn't think Castro was going to last, and obviously that was wrong. And uh, unfortunately, he died of natural causes. It was lead poisoning. Oh wow! <laughs> there you'd go figure it out. But right? that's where the Black Cross name comes from as well. They were using that symbol. If you, it's kind of like the old Christian symbol of the fish. You drew half a fish, and if the other person drew the other half, then you knew you were dealing with a Christian. Same kind of deal with the Black Cross. They'd make a black line with charcoal, and if the other person crossed it, you knew you were dealing with a like-minded person. Oh, wow. So that's where the Black Cross name comes from. And you mentioned Black Cross about to hit the market. And when can we expect to see that in the shops? Well, we're going to do a, a pre-release, and they're going to start shipping some out the 19th of this month. And then we'll hold it back, and then we'll start shipping right after the show for everybody else that's not getting the pre-release cigar. So that will be a pretty much a showcase feature at the show this year. Yes, that's it. Excellent, excellent. Craig worked on that cigar for almost two years before we let it out. That's awesome. I know there was some hints of it last year. Right. Uh, yeah, so I've kind of been waiting on that myself. Um, you know, Mark, the other thing I've been kind of talking to all the uh, brand owners and manufacturers is the, um, the limited marketplace has been, I think, saturated this year. But um, a lot of people we've been talking to today have been very interesting. They have very strong core lines. Has... And Esteban seems to be a, a, a company focused a lot on, on the core lines. Have has, has that come? Have you as a company been tempted to um, maybe explore some of these limiteds, or have you pretty much been committed to the core lines? That would be a question we'd have have to ask Craig. I've not heard any talk along that. We stay pretty committed to what we put out. You know, we've been around for 12, 13 years now. We've got 13 lines in in the the series, so we're not a put eight cigars out and hope one hits. We try and put a really, really solid cigar on the street when we bring it out. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the staying power of these cigars that I've really, really enjoyed uh, watching um, the Esteban Carreras brand grow over the past few years. Uh, Craig's been a great guy. You've been a great supporter as well. Mark, thanks for taking a few minutes here on Stogie Geeks. Enjoy the rest of the festival. Coop, it's always my pleasure, and thanks for having me up. Thank you.